Okay, we're recording. Hey, we made it back. Number two video upon Yay. on my maternity leave. I almost messaged Amy yesterday to say, I don't think we can do tomorrow. <laughs> no, why, why are you just feeling exhausted? Uh, just feeling like I didn't want to get ready in the morning. I was like, my hair's not done. Should I wash it? These are black girl problems. Like, do I need to wash <laughs> it? Will it dry in time? Will it dry looking weird? Or can I? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> when it comes to curly hair, it's like, if you don't get it the way you want it, it can feel like, just call everything off. <laughs> <laughs> um, that always looks great. Well, I, 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 I fake washed it this morning. So oh, how do you yeah. fake wash it? I like put shampoo. a bunch of water in it and I shook it up and I put a towel on it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, just different hacks. It's funny because black girls have gone through so much with their hair that we can all relate to the struggle of just figuring out how to have curly hair because for a long time, black girls would straighten their hair. So mm. for a long, I didn't even know I had curly hair. I just either would comb it out as a child. So it was just always frizzy. I didn't let it be curly, didn't know it was curly. And then I started perming it to straighten it. And like all black girls would perm their hair. And then recently it's been a natural movement where black girls are going back to having natural hair. So I'm still learning how to work it. (laughs) Complete side note, Amy and I are both kind of on hair journeys. (laughs) We're on hair. Yes, definitely on hair journeys. It's true. Yeah. But thank you for joining us. I'm glad we're here. I'm glad you're here. And um, today we are going to talk about, well, overarching everything. I kind of wanted to talk about how Amy and I, like I wanted, at some point I wanted to share how Amy and I both got to this point, like as graphic designers, because I feel like our paths are so not traditional that they can give a lot of hope to people who are thinking how to get from where they are to where they want to be. And they have to do things exactly the way they've been laid out by society or whatever. And I want to say it doesn't even work that way. (laughs) You just kind of just move forward and do more of what you like, less of what you don't. And you end up living your dream life. And I want to show or share how that has looked for me because my life is completely different now than it was five years ago. I'm sure Amy can say the same thing. Yeah. Um, But knowing how we like to ramble on, I'm just going to start with the questions we got in (laughs) because that'll probably take our whole hour. Yes. And I asked on Instagram what people would want us to cover. And I asked like totally last minute. So I'm glad I got at least two questions in from Michelle Simpkin. So thank you for that. And If you're not following us on Instagram, you can do so below. I I include the links to our Instagram pages because then you can see uh, when we post the videos and you can send us your questions and we'll cover them in a video. So be be uh, feel free to do that. Michelle Simkin asked, "What do you do differently at this stage in your business versus when you first started?" Oh, that's such a good question. Yes. It was almost hard for me to answer because I feel like when I first started my business, I didn't even really know I was running a business. (laughs) Right. I was just like, ooh, email lists, ooh, blogging, ooh, like just having fun with it and then realizing, whoa, I'm making money. (laughs) (laughs) This is a business. I need to do my accounting and think of other stuff. But, you know, it was such an organic process. And it's hard to pinpoint when it really started. But I would say that from the point that I was taking it seriously as something that could make me money to this point in time where I am uh, completely living off of my business, it is my full-time thing. Uh, It provides a full-time income. Woo! Well, so are you. (laughs) Um, The thing that I do differently is I think about how to have customers who stay with me for life versus creating a one-off transaction. 
So I went, I've gone from thinking, how can I sell my life binder on Etsy to thinking, how can I help someone who bought my life binder on Etsy continue being my customer for years and years and years. Mm. So that is the, the major thing that has shifted for me. And I feel like at some point people who do make a lot of money in business and are helping a lot of people have that shift where they're no longer thinking about uh, just making sales. They're thinking about truly delighting people to a point where that those people just stay customers forever. Um, <clears throat> one of the ways that I do that is by looking at the customer journey. So when someone buys my life binder on Etsy, I'm thinking, okay, what's the next step I want them to take? And so one of the things I've done was I created a life binder hub where people can log in, access a bunch of other goodies, but also get the newest life binder for free every year. So one of the things I do for my life binder customers is they get the free edition or the newest edition for free every year. And so that just helps me stay engaged with them and continue to give value to them and keep Which, them. Which by the way is, so, is a really unique offering. Mm -hmm. I think like I haven't seen anybody else doing that as in being so generous with it. So you you're receiving an updated brand new product every single year mm -hmm. by just purchasing once. Like that's really an initiation into your world. Like you're almost part of a club at this point. Yeah. And the thing is I do have a club. I do have a membership where people can join for currently it's $10 a month. And so I am weaving things together where people who are life finder customers can also learn about the club so that they can become even more a part of the community of the world I'm creating. So there is something at the end of the rainbow that is monthly recurring in, in income for me and something where people can really be a part of something, you know, month after month after month. <clears throat> instead of just like once a year getting an update from me about the, you know, the newest edition going live, they can actually, I could be like, well, do you want to, do you want to get even deeper into this community? I have this monthly membership. So basically thinking about how am I taking people from this first initial product to something that is a membership model. And if you look at the world, we are living in a membership economy, like mm -hmm. everything is shifting to memberships. You know, you don't go and buy DVDs anymore. You use Netflix. You, you know, there's, there's even memberships for, for having a car now. Like people don't buy cars. They subscribe to cars. And it's like all these things are rolling out where it gives us access to more value for a monthly fee and it ends up helping the people getting a service and really helping the people offering the service. It's just a better way of doing business. Um, uh, and I encourage people to have that in the back of their mind, even if they're starting out is to think about what would my membership be? What would my subscription be? And don't put a ton of pressure on yourself to make it this huge, big, wonderful, amazing thing because then you'll probably freeze up and you'll, you might even create something and realize you don't like it <laughs> um, because it is something that you are committing to. Um, it's long term. If you, and I think about it as I plan on having my business for the rest of my life. So why not make a membership that's part of my business that goes on for the rest of my life? So I just think about it that way. But I've all also been really careful to not create something that I wouldn't genuinely want to keep doing mm. because or otherwise it's not be sustainable. Also. <laughs> huh? Or be a part of yourself, right? Yes. Like you, it has to be something that you would get excited about joining too. Mm -hmm. Can I add one thing here? Like I was thinking about how, there's almost um, a bigger mindset shift that we have to go through in order to reach that realization. So like in the beginning, we start off kind of going, okay, how can I get this one sale? Then how can I get the next sale? Then how can I get the next sale? And it's like, it's about how can I 
spread out and find as many people as possible. Um, and I almost think that in the beginning, we tend to feel like we have to really try for those sales. Like we have to really mm -hmm. almost convince people, like persuade people versus mm -hmm. the versus I think maybe what you were realizing, which is that, oh, actually people do want more from me. Like mm -hmm. I don't have to push for this. I don't have to, it, it doesn't have to be, um, yeah, something that I force. It's people love the product and they mm -hmm. really want more from you. They want to be part of your world. And in a way you're not serving them by holding back and by, exactly. by not creating new ways for them to get involved. Yeah. And I'm not like the best at really remembering that either because I kind of have kept the SOS club a secret because I still, I, I felt like I'm still figuring this out. I'm still figuring this out. <laughs> um, and but people have great. told me like, what is this SOS club? It's like yeah. your secret or something. <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> your secret I, owl society. <laughs> yeah. I'm get I'm getting to the point where it's like, okay, this is how it's supposed to be and wanting to like really blast it from the rooftops. And I have been getting to that point being uh, a new mom has helped me make those mental shifts where it's like, oh, this is what I've been trying to create all along. <laughs> yes. um, because the reality is I do offer different products. So it's really easy to focus on something and kind of let the other product ruminate in the back of my mind and just let it slowly and organically get to a point where I'm like, now it feels right. <laughs> right. Otherwise I'd be like the, I'd seem like the biggest procrastinator, but I'm always working on something because I always have something like I have my life binder, I have the SOS club and I have my course. So I'm always giving value somewhere. And I feel like my SOS club is finally like coming to the surface and being like, okay, we're ready for you to focus on us. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think that's, wanted, that's a really nice point. Like you haven't put pressure on yourself to force mm -hmm. this into something or to like, to make it exactly what it needs to be immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we all go through, like we all need to go through that process of just experimenting and playing and being like, Oh yeah, maybe this isn't quite right. Like we move a little bit, towards a certain direction and figure like, well, it doesn't feel quite right. Let's, let's mm -hmm. recalibrate. Let's get back in alignment again. Yeah. And, and the process can take some time. Like it's taken you yeah. a couple of years or so. It's taken right? time. Yeah. It's taken time. Um, I started the SOS club several years ago and I just kept it really small. I never really marketed it. And, but, but it's something that only took me a couple hours a month to, to, to do. And it's made thousands of dollars just from a small group of people who signed up basically when I started it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, it's never been not worth the time, but it's also something that I know could be so much better and it's starting to get to that point and I'm really excited, but uh, all that to say, you know, have the thought about the fact that your business needs to be a part of this membership economy, probably like that, that doesn't have to be a huge daunting thing. It could be a, something as simple as having a subscription, like look at Patreon, look at, look at what artists are doing to do what they're doing anyway, but give people who follow them an opportunity to financially support them and get exclusive content as a result of that. Like I see people, there's this one girl I follow on Instagram. She, she's an artist on her iPad. She creates iPad illustrations and she has a Patreon account where people who pay whatever per month can access a uh, special art for her that she only gives to those people but it's like she's creating this stuff anyway so it's kind of like look at what you're doing anyway and think about what part of that would be something that you could offer exclusively to your fans for a monthly fee and you can do that through patreon you can do do that through gumroad i used to run my my 
SOS club through Gumroad. And it was as simple as it literally took an hour to put together the, you know, put up the, put up the page. Basically, they're just basically like, okay, upload here, put a, upload a picture there, enter the description, set the price done. And it's like, okay, SOS club, here's a graphic. Here's what it's about. $5 a month at that time. Um, four printables a month here and, and generates the link and you can share that link with anyone and start making money. And so that was it. So you don't need to overcomplicate it. It doesn't need to be this huge fancy website like other people have for their memberships that can come later. Um, so I would encourage you guys to think about that. It could be so, so, so simple to, to start uh, getting into that mindset of having a membership based business or at least a part of your business be a membership model and if you're just starting out be open to the idea that people do want your stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> and you should get paid for it and they, <laughs> like they want like people sometimes it can be so hard to believe that people want to hear from you and that people want to see what you're doing and and support you but and people want to support you but they do they do. Yeah. Yes. I'm already thinking about what can Amy be doing already? <laughs> what can I be doing already? Please tell me, please, please. What, okay. Whatever is sustainable, like probably something around your art. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking so. I think it needs to be something like that. It's the, it's often the thing that's right in front of you, right? The thing that you're exactly. doing anyway, yeah. that you that also keeps coming back. It's a sort of niggling thing at the back of my mind. It keeps coming back. And it's mm -hmm. that, the thing that I'm trying to go like, no, later, later. I got mm -hmm. other things to do. I don't have time for this. <laughs> um, I but think if you it keep... was in like the big leap, right? That Gay Hendricks talks about how often mm -hmm. we're avoiding the thing we actually want to do because, yeah. because it's the thing we want to do. And we're terribly afraid that it's going to be painful if we fail at it. So we just kind of convince mm -hmm. ourselves that it's not the thing. Yeah. I think that might mm -hmm. be. Yeah. And like, I would say, look at what memberships and subscriptions you're joining and see what people are doing in there, because then it kind of mm -hmm. tells you this is, easy like I'm paying ten dollars for this a month and this is all she's doing like it gets you out of thinking that it has to be something ridiculously incredible like I the most recent membership I signed up to was this woman who uh, helps people with their Squarespace rep Squarespace websites and I actually hired her for 50 bucks fifty dollars to migrate my content from my blog spot to my Squarespace website two years ago or the beginning of last year. And so now I'm like turning into a lifetime customer because he opened up a membership where you pay a certain amount of money per month. Right now it's $10 a month, but I think she's going to raise it to $20 a month where you get exclusive, exclusive content, which is basically her giving tips for your Squarespace website. Like here's how to do this. Here's how to do that. Here's how to do this. And um, access to her to have ask questions and, and get a discount on her services. Oh, I and that. I was thinking like, that is an awesome model, even to just say being a member gives you not only exclusive content, but a discount on whatever I create, like you get, you get the best price because you're a member. So it's like looking at ways of offering value that don't necessarily mean you're creating something every month. You know, there's look at what you are a member of and, and what you're really paying for. Sometimes it's not even paying for something new every month. It's just to probably have access yes. to a person yeah. or mm. have the best price on their products or services or conferences. It just shows you how many different ways there are of doing it and how we don't need to feel like 
it's something that we have to really figure out. It can be really, really simple. Yeah, I feel like we are so often just overcomplicating things. Well, I say we, I mean I am <laughs> overcomplicating everything. Like it's got to be this mysterious thing that um, I need to uncover. But uh, it could even be something as simple as get ex like look like look at something you're already creating. That could literally literally be in your membership just to like play imaginatively here like you have been posting your minimalist journey and it's been inspiring to watch through your instagram stories you're like okay look here's what i'm getting rid of now and here's why i'm getting rid of it and here's the story behind it and here's how i'm feeling and oh my goodness i'm nauseous and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. and here's here's a passage from the book i'm reading and how it's inspiring me and but it's like it all weaves together and it could just and I'm already thinking like Amy could have like a club that is just people getting access to Amy's everyday life like <laughs> the, the, what you put on Instagram could be the membership it's like come into my world even more um, like even this morning I, you you posted about how look at all these books I have um, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. why do I have all these books? And the book set, and the book I'm reading about minimalism says that all these things are talking to you and telling you things. If it's like I'm inspired, <laughs> and if I and if you were like a leader in the minimalist movement, then one side of your business could be giving people free content on how to be a minimalist. And I'm, you know, I say leader, but it's like a leader is just someone who is helping other people do something. So don't make that a big deal. And then. Your membership could be like want exclusive insights, tips, and videos on how I'm doing this in my life. You know, sign up here, and it can evolve. You know, when you're moved on to the next thing, you can you know share from that place. But it's like the thing is, what you're already doing for free could also be something people pay for. People feel like if I'm going to charge for this, it has to be ten times better. But it doesn't. It just has to be something you're charging for. <laughs> it's like it could be the same effort, just with a price tag on it. And you know, when you get to that shift, you Mind stop. <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> well, that's what I learned. It's like look at how much effort people put into some of these blog posts they write. It's like they're huge and they have all these links and they're all all these details. And it's like that's literally a product. They just decided whether it's going to be for free or for for a price and you make those decisions all the, all the time you get to a point in your business where you're like I made this do I want to charge for it or do I want to, want to offer it for free because you could literally charge for it if you want you just start to value your own work that way but yeah I hope that answers Michelle Simpkins question <laughs> oh about um, how you what did we what do we differently and so my what I do differently is I think more about that membership model and how I'm tying my business into it versus just selling stuff and having one-off transactions so instead of someone coming into my business buying something and being like bye <laughs> it's like no bring them in even more help them discover the next thing because it's so much easier and prof more profitable to sell more to a customer than to just keep getting new customers so if i look at my business i have well over 2000 customers the last time i checked and i was like oh my gosh it's like <laughs> well actually almost three i have 3000 customers now that i think about it and it's like why haven't I helped them along a journey yet? And like, yeah. what if all these people were in a membership instead of just people yeah. that bought one thing? So true. Three thousand people paying ten dollars a month is thirty thousand dollars a month. Yes. <laughs> and go, I'm not saying go and serve them. Go. Yeah, I'm not saying I would have had a hundred percent conversion rate. I'm just saying like a percentage of those people probably would have liked to join my club, but they didn't know about it. Yeah. Um, so now I'm kind of like taking steps to help people know about it and make a decision of whether or not they want to join. But yeah, it's like when you start doing the math, you're like mind blown. <laughs> mind blown. Yes. 
Amazing. Um, Amy, did you have anything to say on that? What are you doing differently at this stage in your business versus when you first started? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, okay, so I have to be honest, I have not really done much in my business lately. And I'm kind of okay with that. As in, I, I, actually, that's a lie. I have not been okay with that. But today, <laughs> I am okay with that. Um, I made a shift from, I, I was really in like produce mode for a long time. I think it was the start of the business, like the first year or so. And I was like, right, I got so many ideas. I'm going to do this habit tracking kit and the morning routine kit. And I'm going to do the productivity and I'm going to do this. Because I like, I was in the, the process of translating all the things that I'm already doing for myself into products. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then I sort of hit a wall with it where I wasn't too sure where I needed to go. Um, and I realized I just, I just was reaching a sort of saturation point just in my life in general, like as, as in I was consuming a lot of self-development stuff, doing a lot of courses, bringing a lot, a lot, a lot into my life and my brain. And mm -hmm. I think I reached a, a saturation point where I was like, oh, mm -hmm. no more. I'm not making any more products for a while. I need to declutter. Like it just, it, um, triggered mm -hmm. this need to purge my mm -hmm. belongings and my identity and who I think I am and, and see what's left. You mm -hmm. know? So I have been adding bits and pieces to my store uh, as I've needed them. So as I, like for instance, the other day I, I uploaded a hydration tracker so you can mm -hmm. track your water intake. And that oh was God, just, Amy, I can tell what I need to, I, you're at that point that I was, I need to help you stop what you're doing and do things differently. I think that's okay. at the point you're at. <laughs> yes. I like the sound okay. of that. Please, please help me. Um, yes, I've been All getting right. rid of stuff and that's, yeah. So you're at a point where you need to do more with what you already have versus just doing more. And you just said, I added bits and pieces. Yeah, I my. did. <laughs> oh, no, that's not the minimalist way. <laughs> <laughs> but that would have been fine, except the goal, you're at a stage where you don't need to add bits and pieces to your Etsy store. You need to start creating that next step for your Etsy customers. So instead of putting those bits and pieces for sale in your Etsy store, yes. you need to create your own version of a private exclusive space like my hub and put those bits and pieces in the hub and then tell everyone and by putting in each of your products hey i have these bits and pieces <laughs> <laughs> and when you buy this product you can sign into this place and get these bits and pieces. <laughs> oh, you are such a genius. <laughs> oh my goodness. You see, yeah. you don't need to create anything special or different. You've already, you're already creating it. You're just moving it into a different place where it can work as a next step for your customer. Oh. Um, so it goes to work for you even more. And then because you know you're at a thousand customers already like yeah i hit a thousand the other day Can we yeah just take a moment to celebrate that That's don't get to two thousand and realize you didn't help any of those people become oh, yeah. long-term customers okay don't get to yeah. two thousand and realize you just made two thousand transactions and mm. never saw those people again mm -hmm. How are you helping those people become into your business even more, even though you, even though you may not have a membership yet, okay. it's like, how are you setting the stage to eventually have a membership? Oh man, you're so right as well. Isn't it funny how at the beginning of the call, you're talking about your membership and about <laughs> creating long-term customers and I'm here nodding. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> such a good idea. Meanwhile, Do you know what you have? Yeah. You don't have to create anything different. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just nodding and it's like going in one ear and out the other. And it's like, <laughs> well, I can look at you and see you're at, you're where I was. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I can help you just make those little tweaks. It's like, I'm not telling you to create new products. I'm not yeah. telling you to do something dramatically differently. I'm just telling you to tweak, tweak yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's true. Yeah. That's oh my it. Gosh. That's okay. That's it. Yeah. So um, then your so business by the way, is working. Oh, go ahead. Oh no. I was, this is a note to, to you who's watching. Like, it's so easy to sit back and be like, yes, that's a really, really good idea. But then think everybody else should do that. All of you guys, <laughs> you should all do that. And we're going to challenge you to think, well, what if I were to do that? I mean, really, yeah. what if I were to do that? Now I'm getting like, I'm sweaty suddenly. <laughs> like, I'm getting the, oh, I'm shaking a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's, Thing I need to do but you're right it doesn't need to be scary it can be little little tweaks like moving stuff yeah. instead of adding lots and lots of extra bells and whistles and and yeah, fun why do why you need to add more to your Etsy store yeah you I just don't you're right you don't you need to help those customers become a customer of something else and something else and something else yeah help those customers that's true that's true think of ways to help them also in new ways. Maybe it's not just in printables, but it could be by adding videos or exactly. Extra. But that can come later. The first thing can be get access to these extra printables. Okay. And by them logging in, they're giving you their email address. That's the real step. It's like they went from buying something to basically subscribing to something. Mm -mm -mm. Cause you're going to say, get these, the, these extra printables and I'm going to keep adding value here. I'm going to put up videos. I'm going to create maybe a Facebook community. I'm going to answer questions. All those things can come stage by stage by stage. Like I literally just opened a Facebook community for my life finder customers two weeks ago. It's yeah. like, I didn't start out with all the bells and whistles. Um, um, and even now I'm just adding extra tutorials to my private space for my customers as well. So it's like, what's the minimal thing that I can do that they would want to go from buying this on Etsy to going to my website and signing up to this private customer space and then add value, add value, add value. Um, what, was I gonna, what was I gonna say? I can't remember. I can't remember, but yeah, you should do that. Can I tell you something that's coming up for me? Something a bit weird is that just as you're saying this, I'm like, yeah, but then it would become a real business and I am not a real business person. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, that's what I was going to say. Okay. So you always have this thing come up for you where you're like, I'm not really working on my business. Yeah. Like, what, what are you talking about, Amy? You just made a thousand sales, a thousand sales. You're like posting on Instagram. You're communicating with your audience. You're, it's like, you're, you, you're, you, where's this business you're not working on? Because I, I thought you were working on it. <laughs> um, and the thing is when you, like you are getting into a space you're at a space now where your business doesn't need you to work on it it just needs you to tweak it mm. so that it's working so like even with me and my business i one of the reasons i don't feel stressed is because things are working because i set things up to, to happen without me actually having to go in there and be like you know <laughs> so like i every time i talk to Amy, I update her and like, yeah, I put up a wait list for this course I'm creating. And I'm like, it's up to 300 people. It's up to 500 people. And it's up to 700 people. It's like, right. I can feel like my business is working. People yeah. are joining this wait list for a product I haven't even created yet. And that's this feeling of things are happening, but I'm not actually doing anything. I just took the 30 minutes to set up a email list, put up a opt-in on my website and walked away. And three months later, there's 700 people on that list for a course I haven't made yet. But I can tell, I can see if I was the old version of myself, I would just be like, I have to work on this course. I have to work on this course and have nothing happen versus thinking, what can I do now so that when I do create this course, I've set the stage for my business to catapult to that next level. So for you, it's like, what can you do now so that when you do have a membership or another product, 
you've set the stage to just go from where you are now to 10 times bigger. And I've seen people do that in their businesses, like literally going from zero and because they've set the stage, they capitalize on what they've put in place and go from zero to tens of thousands of dollars per month. And it's like, that was always in their business. That money was there. They just needed to pull the trigger. And I was listening to Bob Proctor. I don't know if you know Bob Proctor. He's a big personal development guy. And he said, and he's, he's old and he's been around a long time, but he has so much energy and he's so, you know, has all this wisdom. And he said, uh, well, well, okay, let me think about what he said. What was it? He said, we are all rich. We're all wealthy. Um, just the money hasn't shown up for some people. Or he says, you're already wealthy. You just haven't, you just don't have, the money hasn't shown up yet. It's like, you already have all this wealth. You yeah. just don't have, like the money hasn't manifested because you haven't recognized that you have this wealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like imagine someone who builds a community, like they're posting on Instagram and YouTube and they're giving all this value and they're building this community and they're giving all these tips and I see people do this where it's like they're giving, 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 giving. But I'm like, where's your website? Where's your email list? Where's your product? Where's the next step? <laughs> and it's like you can build a community of thousands of people watching your YouTube videos and you literally have it in your grasp to have a six or seven figure business just by offering that next step to your community. But if you get so caught up in... I have to give, 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 give. I, I, I'm not, I'm not ready to make something that people would actually buy. And then you, then it's like you have this wealth, but you haven't allowed the money to show up. Yeah. It's like the wealth is there. The ability is there. It's like everything is there for you to actually go from making no money this month to making $10,000 next month. It's all there. You just have to shift. So like I look back at mine. $10,000 launch that I had of my course last year. Like it was always there. Those people who wanted to buy it were always there. The, the, the ability to create it, the knowledge was always there. I just needed to tweak this, tweak that, sit, sit on my butt to make the course for, you know, the week that it took to make it and let people buy it. And it was like, it was inside of me. That's why people say it's, it's inside of you. Success is inside of you. It's like everything you need is inside of you. It's like the wealth is already there. Mm. And I look at you, Amy, and I'm, I'm looking at someone who's already sitting on a six figure business. Just the quality of the work, the community, community that you're creating, you have a thousand customers. And I, you know, what do I always talk about? A thousand true fans. It's like giving yeah. those people an opportunity to become a true fan a thousand people who spend a hundred dollars in your business over the course of a year is a hundred thousand dollar business. True that. Like but that. if you just sell them something that's 10 bucks and say goodbye, it's a thousand dollar business. <laughs> it's so true. Oh my goodness. So, well, as you were talking about, it's already there. I had this image of like a piece of marble or something and the sculpture, the beautiful, figure the form is already inside there you just have to mm -hmm. allow it to show itself by yeah by doing doing the thing that you need to do which is to carve at this thing yeah I've, I've seen that quote where someone asked Mar michelangelo like how do you create such beautiful sculptures and he says the sculpture is already there i just chip away all the excess yeah chip away at the excess i love that yeah I love that. And sometimes the excess can be the excess beliefs, really, that you, yeah. that you put up. Like, Letting go of what you, it's not like you need to go learn something. It's not like you, there's something out there that you don't have yet. And if you had it, then everything would be different. It's like, you just have a lot of stuff that you need to let go of. Let go of, exactly. Yeah. And once you get rid of that burden, you're like, you see clearly what the path is. And that's another, another you know, insight into it's already there. It's already inside of you. You're not looking for something that you don't already have. 
Um, like the products that we create, they were inside of us. My life binder was already inside of us. It's like going from thinking that this is something anyone can create. I don't need to tell people how to make their own or, or, or offer it for sale. Anyone can do this. And then tweaking and making it something people could buy changed everything. But it wasn't something I had to go figure out. It was already something I was doing and living. Um, and that brings us to Michelle Simpkins. Next question, you know, as we're talking about excess and things that are already inside of you and just letting go of what's not helping you. Um, how has your own decluttering minimalism journey been going? Amy has been sharing, uh, I can't it's basically everything cut off the question, but yeah, Amy has been sharing her journey. Michelle wants to know how, well, Amy, tell us a little bit about your journey so far with minimalism. Okay. So I started reading this book. Good. Oh, can you see it? Goodbye things on minimalist living by Fumio Sasaki. And it's amazing. I think, as we were saying before, it was triggered by reaching this saturation point where I just didn't know what I needed to do. I was just mm -hmm. like, trying to do too many things and surrounded by too many things. And it just kind of something snapped in me. And I was like, ah, I need to, I need to simplify. I need to uncover like, mm. what, who am I actually? What, am, what, do I, what do I care about? And what do I really need to focus on? I'm, there's just too much noise everywhere. Mm -hmm consuming too much of everything um and yeah i've been reading this book and it's amazing the premise of the book is that minimalist minimalist living allows you to make space for the things that actually matter to you just mm -hmm. removing all the distractions all the extras so that you're only surrounded by the few things that mean something to you and those can those are often not even things like people or activities or Mm -hmm. you, you learn a lot about yourself in this process and so I have been I've been working through my junk <laughs> room by room I've been it's I started with my wardrobe and then I moved over to like books and things and extra equipment that I just wasn't using like the other day I let go of my my sewing machine my my industrial sewing machine. I still have my domestic sewing machine, but the industrial sewing machine that was taking up all this space behind here. So now I can make videos with you against this, <laughs> my plants and not have all that. Is, is this the same location or? Yeah. Whoa. I thought you moved to a whole different part of your house. Oh, wait. It's, it's the same room. It's just, okay. the, it's the wall, wall on the left. Yeah. Okay. I was like, whoa, <laughs> you got rid of some wall there. I see windows. I didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been that productive. <laughs> but um, I, did, I did get rid of all of the bookshelves that were above, behind. I and, saw that. Yes. That was um, a following a tip in this book he says get rid of the nest and the pests will follow so mm -hmm. instead of going all right i'll remove this container once i get rid of the stuff remove the container then you'll mm -hmm. be like oh no i need to do something with all this stuff what do i do and that's exactly what i did i was like right we're removing the books off the shelf i'm removing the shelves the shelves are going to somebody who needs them they, they already have a new owner now I need to sort my books out because I don't want to be surrounded by piles of books for the rest of my life. Um, and yeah, I, I, can I read you a passage, actually, my favorite yeah. passage of the book? This, you know, when there's just one, there's one or two pages, like you can get a, a ton of value out of a book, but there'll be one idea that just sticks with you forever and ever. Mm -hmm. um, and this is it for me. The silent to-do list. When we let go of our possessions, our ability to concentrate improves. Why might this be? Well, things don't just sit there. They send us silent messages. And the more the item has been neglected, the stronger its message will be. Maybe there's an English textbook that I gave up on before I even got halfway through it. It might be looking at me now and saying something like, you look bored. Why don't you study me again? Or there's a dead light bulb that has yet to be replaced. Don't tell me you forgot to buy my replacement again. Why can't you do something so simple? Or a stack of dirty dishes. Here we go again. I can never count on you. We even get messages from items we use on a daily basis. Imagine what your TV might be saying to you. 
you have a bunch of recordings that you haven't watched yet. Oh, and maybe it's about time you gave me a light dusting. Um, and so it, he goes on with a few more examples. I love that. It's amazing, isn't it? Just it's the almost... idea that like our stuff isn't just sitting there benign, innocent. It, they yeah. all talk to us every day and what toll that's taking on us. Mm-hmm. I almost like that better than this, this spark joy yeah. because sometimes it's hard for me to um, really tap into that question. And I kind of prefer like looking at something and saying, what is this telling me? Mm-hmm. And going from there. So like looking at this, Oh, I can hear my baby crying. We have to, we have to close out soon, but um, my husband's taking care of him. Just, he's just crying. <laughs> um, looking at something and realizing like, this is talking to me from who I used to be. Yeah. And just identifying that is enough to realize I need to let this go. This is not communicating to me from a place of who I want to become. Mm. And so for me, minimalism is all about letting go of who you used to be so that you can keep evolving into who you need to become. Definitely. And yes, things do talk to you and have an energy. And one of the reasons why I just have a practice of keeping things clean, it's because to me, like if you do practice minimalism and you are getting rid of things, then cleaning can be something that's really a maintenance thing and not this overwhelming thing. And the reason like I have this practice of I need to keep things clean um, is because uh, it's less energy to clean than to look at something that's dirty, like something that's messy and dirty. It's taking energy away from you and it's taking more energy than it would take for you to just clean it. <laughs> totally. It's, it's saying things like, Oh, you're so useless. Why don't you do this? You it's just mm-hmm. a couple of dishes. Why not do it now? You're just, you're lazy or this, you're that with all the things that we tell ourselves when we look at this thing. I mean, it's not conscious, but it's happening. It's going there. It's going round in your mind and you, you don't Mm -hmm. feel better for looking at that pile of dishes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when you really realize I have stuff to do, like I have things I want to accomplish. I have a year that I want to get it done by. Then you, that's part of getting rid of the excess. It's like, I don't have time to deal with, cleaning the same thing over and over that should have been given away. I don't have time to look at something that makes me feel guilty. Like I got to get things done. I got to move. <laughs> yeah. Like things have to happen. It's like, this is, I don't get to come back after I die and be like, okay, now I'm going to do things the way I want to do it. <laughs> it's like, no, this is it. Um, yes. I, I didn't realize it. that it's this decluttering journey. A lot of it for me has been getting rid of things that make me feel guilty things Mm -hmm. that there's a lot of items in my house. I didn't realize that say things like you should do this. You Mm -hmm. should read me. You should learn about negotiation. You should learn about selling. You should learn about whatever, all these other things. Mm -hmm. And I've just, I just put them in a pile and I was like, no, Mm -hmm. (laughs) no, not right now. I'm reading the one book that I want to read right now. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. You are, you're decluttering, you're letting go, and you are honing in on what's already there that's going to be the next step for you. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Michelle Simkin, for those wonderful questions. Yes, thank you, Michelle. gave us our whole show. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, if the, you know, the viewer has any questions that they want us to cover in our next show, comment below this YouTube video, we do love just answering questions and having a chat around it. And I think that's it. I better go talk to my baby and calm him down. I don't know if you can hear him. He sounds very distressed. <laughs> yes, he's hungry or he needs, needs a hug. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll, have, uh, we'll be back next week. Yes. And if you have any questions or anything you want us to talk about, then just message us on Instagram. Because we pretty much live over there. Yeah. Yeah. Check us out. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.